Hi guys, um, I've written a new plugin for Blender. It's a lip syncing plugin which tries to link sync a character's lip movements in or in a line with a script. So for a start, I've got an example script here I'm going to show you. Just a quick joke between a character called Frankie and David about uh, minis and whales. Uh, just ignore how bad the joke is. The first thing we're going to need to do anyway is to look at uh, creating some shape keys. I've got a standard monkey here, uh, Suzanne from, from uh, Blender. First thing I'm going to do to her is make her mouth a little wider because it's a bit difficult to see a mouth moving around when it's so small. So we'll give her a wide mouth. And then even wider still. There we go, now we can actually see what's going on with a mouth. And we're going to create some shape keys. These are created inside the mesh. The very first one is going to be with his mouth closed. With her mouth closed, sorry, I suppose Suzanne's a girl's name. So, um... Nice even top, close the bottom lip, there we go, that's the first shape done, and so we add it, that's the basis. The next one we're going to do is, well the next nine we're going to do are the nine different phoneme shapes. We're going to start with the one known as AI, going A, like that. So, uh, Suzanne, how do you go A, like that? First we need to lower the bottom lip a bit. And then the rest of it too. The uh, top stays fairly even, but we want the mouth open, so we'll grab all of this and lower all of that. Not that bit. There we go, perhaps we'll even bring up the corners of the mouth slightly. And there we have it, the monkey going, hey! And we move on to the next of the uh, keys. I know that we can turn that on and up. It's not very even, but I'm sure you'll spend a lot more time on yours than I am on mine. The next shape we want is an O shape, so it's more similar to an A than anything else. So we'll uh, new shape key from that. This is O, ooh, like a monkey going oh, oh, oh. And uh, that's basically gonna be just raising that up like so. So that gives us that key. The very next key we want is E, which is very similar again to A, so we'll create it from that. Use it from mix, you want to call it E. Um, basically the only difference between A and E is how close together the teeth are, and uh, this monkey's obviously got no teeth, so that's going to be a bit tricky to do. We'll just basically raise it up slightly perhaps pull the corners out a bit more. There we go. The next one is ooh, not ooh, but more of a oh, oh sound. Oh, oh. So um, we'll create that based on that one, since that's what it's most similar to. New key from that mix. And this one is the key for U. The shape of a U is, uh, as we say, very similar to the O, but with this perhaps down a little bit more. And we'll leave it at that. Um, the next shape we're going to do is L, 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 where the lips sort of curl out and the tongue comes up to the teeth. But we haven't got a tongue on our monkey. So again, it's quite similar to O, really. We'll create a new shape from that and call it L. <coughs> The names of these things are quite important. They are going to be used to know which sounds are going to be, obviously, so we, we can't cheat with the names in any way. Um, L. So that's basically just a... Yeah, pull that down slightly, move all of the lips forward very slightly. If 
probably should have done that with less. Move all of the lips forward very slightly. I'm going to call that an L. As I say, you'll spend a lot more time on these things than I will. Once again, duplicating O, we're going to move to WQ. Mm -hmm. Kissing sort of pose. And in order to get a kiss, we'll bring the lips in and bring them in from the sides too. And then bring the whole thing out a little bit too. Perhaps not that one. That can move back in. And that one definitely needs to go back in. There we go. Does that look like, like she's kissing? Not very much, but it will do. No, it won't. Let's, that needs to be straight out. This needs to be more shut. This needs to be more shut. There we go. That's more of a new sound. Um, the next key we're going to want is M, mm, mm, which is more or less like the closed one we've already got. So we can just duplicate that. This is the key for M. Mm. Um, we really don't need to move this very much at all. I'll just move the sides outwards slightly. And we'll leave it at that. Th is the next sound. Th which is, uh, again, going to be interesting because we've got no teeth for the lips to come up behind. But still, it's FV. And the. We move the bottom lip back slightly and the top lip forward slightly, maybe a bit down. And there we go, there's a th shape. Only one more to do. Uh, Etc. Which is just the noise that people, all the other syllables that aren't named so far. Um, Etc. is quite similar to a smile again there. So we'll produce our final keyframe. Etc. Basically just move that up a little bit more again. And we're done making shape keys. So the interesting thing that we need to do now is to actually install my plugin. So if you go to user preferences, click install from file, and then and click the quick talk Python file, which you can find on my website uh, here, or you can find on GitHub. Um, once you click install, your plugin uh, add-ons will have the uh, lip sync, quick talk lip syncer selected. And once you turn that on, you have new buttons in your object menu. Build shape key panel armature is the top one. And what that's going to do is add bones to an armature that can control each of the shape keys. Which means firstly, we'll need an armature to add it to. If we just have a single bone, in the middle of the monkey's head and then apply that armature to the monkey. Now, place the 3D cursor where you want the panel to appear. You want the panel to appear there and press build shape key panel armature. And suddenly we have a panel. We have levers which will affect each of those shapes. Um, if you have any keys, shape keys in your object, it will make levers for all of them. If you want it to not create a lever for you, one of your particular uh, shape keys, then start the name of it with an exclamation mark. It will ignore all the ones with an exclamation mark in front. What I should have already done is duplicate that. And now it's going to be broken because that's going to control both. I don't want it to control both. 
So let's go back to before I added the bones and duplicate it now. Here it's parent. Now hopefully we'll create some bones that uh, only control one of them. Yes, because we've got two people in our scene, see? Sorry about that. Um, we'll do something similar with this one, adding an armature for it. Just a single bone, sticking out of his head. Apply the armature to the thing and then create some shape keys. Control panel. Now we've got two sets of controls controlling two sets of monkeys. And it's time to move on to the next button. Guess the dialogue markers. First, we're going to need a script. So click on the little browse button here and you can find the uh, quick script file that you want to use. Um, the script file, as I showed you earlier, is, is just the, line, the name of a character followed by a colon on a line all by itself and then whatever lines he's going to speak followed by the name of the next character, etc. Um, when we click the button here, guest dialogue markers, it will load that and then spread dialogue markers out across the whole of the timeline for where each uh, change of person peaking is. So before we do that, we want to add an actual WAV in. Um, video sequence editor, add the sound. We've got some vocals that I recorded earlier of, of this particular little rubbish joke. We set the start and end frames so that they're within the WAV. And then we can play it. Alright, here's a joke for you. How do you get to Wales in a minute? As you see, that's working okay. So we will now add the markers. If we click guest dialogue markers, four markers are added because there's four changes of people speaking. The first thing we want to do is align those to be exactly on the same frame as when the actual speaking starts. You'll probably want to turn on audio scrubbing and frame dropping to make sure that we don't lose sync. And frame two is where we get the very first noise from that speech. So we'll set that to frame two. Sorry about the neighbors drilling. David's speech there is very slightly out too. It's doing a better job guessing these than it usually does. There we go, that's where her speech starts. And that's where David's final speech starts. Once you've aligned the monologue markers, dialogue markers, that control where each of the people are changing speech, you can click the guest line markers and that will add a marker in for every line within each person's speech. In our case here, we've only got one extra line added because everyone's own speaking speech is a one-liner except for Frankie at the beginning. So she starts speaking on frame 67. We'll move that marker along to 67 and click the guest word markers button. Now we have a marker for every single word in the entire script and we need to align them all. It will have done as best, as good a job as I can of guessing where they're going to be, but it won't be good. So let's go through every single one of these words. I'll probably end up speeding up the video a bit as we go through this bit to avoid wasting your time. It is basically quite tedious. So, all right, so right starts there. And that's where the word here starts. And that's the word ah. The word joke starts just a few frames later than that. And that's the F, a four. The word U starts there. Um, 
as you can imagine, being an animator can be quite tedious. The word you starts there. The word get is very short after the word you, practically on top of it. To well, I'm being quite sloppy here because I'm just trying to give you the idea of how it works rather than producing a good result. I'm sorry, it's quite hard to speak and listen to where the words are and the markers and, and do everything at once. But we are at least up to David's thing, and I imagine you're skipping forward by now anyway. Don't, don't, the word don't starts there. No, the word no starts there. How do... Get to Wales in a mini in a mini, and then we're up to Frankie's line. In the front and one in in the back. Hooray, final line. Uh, this is the line where David says how stupid the joke is. Is the word is starts there. It is just <laughs> awful. And then we have word markers for every word. Because uh, Blender shows the name of the marker that you're currently at in the window there, we can do quite a good little test now of just playing through the animation and checking that the words come up at the same time as they're spoken, like so. I don't know. How do you get to Wales in a mini? One in the front and one in the back. That is just awful. And that seems to be lined up pretty well. So how do we then plot these to the actual timeline for these uh, bones? How do we plot the phonemes to the timeline for the bones? As you notice, the next pile down here is a dictionary thing. You need to be able to load up a uh, dictionary full of words that describe which phonemes are in the words. Now, the CMU pronouncing dictionary exists here at uh, speech.cs.cmu.edu. Um, I'll put a link in the description. And you can download yourself a uh, dictionary and then select that dictionary from here. Um, mine's called Standard Dictionary there. And once it's selected, we can select one of the armatures. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I think, uh, did I mention it earlier? The armature needs to be named after the character that's going to speak the lines. So, in this case, we need one of them to be called Frankie. 
and the other one to be called David. Now, because of the way uh, objects get linked in from other scenes usually, if it has for some reason got underscore proxy after the name, that will be ignored and, and should work fine. But once we've finally done that, we can switch to the F curve editor, graph editor, and finally apply some lines. Now we've got a dictionary. Select the armature that you want to apply the talk to and quick talk plot. It takes a little while to load in the dictionary because it is really rather big. But once it's done so, you should see these bones now have animation data. Isn't that fantastic? If we press play. All right, here's a joke for you. How do you get to weigh yours in a minute? I don't know. So once we get to the other character, his, his lines haven't been plotted yet because we haven't yet selected him and collect, select quick talk plot, which will add the plots for the final character now. As we see, that's now got animation data too. And we can actually watch our whole scene unfold like this. All right, here's a joke for you. How do you get to weigh yours? As you can see, the lip sync is reasonably good. How do you get to You may find that you'll have to go in and adjust the scale and move around some of this animation data to make it fit properly because it is just guessed from the script. You can see all the little levers moving around as, as the things animate. And that's how the lip sync plugin works. Um, I hope you like it. You can download it from my website at uh, tentacles.org.uk and I hope you get as much use out of it as I expect I will. And with any luck, I'll never have to run Papageo again. Thanks everyone. That is just awful. Alright, here's a joke for you.